Our next inductee, Milton Doc Runko, got the nickname Doc, of course, being a dentist, well, found himself in just a unique kind of tournament situation that uh, was rather surprising at one point in time. And uh, in the end, it forced him to stay in his hotel room. And we'll tell you exactly what that is. Apparently on the trip to Nationals, and everyone expected, uh, expected his team to, to be in the Nationals, and of course Coach Struckman was uh, the coach of, of this hockey team, there was kind of a little quirk in the tournament rules. They go up to the tournament in New Jersey, they play Paddock, Michigan, they win by nine goals. That gave them a plus nine in the standings. They then win the next game over Chicago by three goals, and that gives them a plus 12 in the standings. Well, then they're playing Minnesota. They're losing in the game two to one in the third period. An official comes over to coach and says, hey, listen, you, you got to win this game if you're going to move on to the finals. And what are you talking about? It's a 2-1 score, and we're, we're plus 12. Apparently, there was a rule in that tournament that if there was a team that lost all three of their games, in this case, it was Paddock, Michigan, that lost all three of their games, then those games would be thrown out. They wouldn't count. So in other words, the nine goals that they had scored to give them quite a cushion on the tournament end up not counting. That game was as if it didn't play, wasn't played. Next thing you know, they're going up against this Minnesota team and all of a sudden they're even again. Well, they've got to win the game. He pulls the goaltender and uh, eventually they lose that game and they did not go into the finals of that, that tournament. Well, Doc was so upset with this that uh, when they all went out to eat later on, he was so unhappy that he went back to the hotel, did not come out of his hotel room until the flight home. And basically, the, you know, the love that he had for his team and players was just, it meant that much to him, and it was unmatched. He also absolutely loved the food. He made sure that everyone's around uh, for the best restaurants that they went to. They'd get some per diem for the kids uh, to give them some money, and uh, of course they would use it in their first meal, not realizing that there's more meals to come, and he was always there to make sure that they had the money they needed for the next meals. Being a dentist, he was there to make sure that if anybody needed a mouthpiece, he needed a mouthpiece, they got it. It was all about the kids and what was needed for them, and he is our next St. Louis Amateur Hockey Hall of Fame inductee, Milton Doc Runco, and his son Frankie is here to accept the award. <laughs> On behalf of my brother Vince, sister Annette, and the rest of the Runkle family, I would like to thank the Hall of Fame committee for this great honor. It came as an unexpected surprise because there are so many deserving people yet to be recognized. Names like Charlie Eberly, Paul Wiseman, Bob Handelman, John Pauk, and many, many others. But as most of you know, timing is everything, and on Wednesday, November 25th, I was able to take the induction letter home and read it to my mother. She has since passed away, and I am sure mom and dad are looking down on me as I speak, laughing at me, trying to make this attempt at a speech. <laughs> dad was a deeply religious man who loved his family, people, and hockey. He was very passionate in everything he did. After becoming a hockey dad for one year, he read every book, watched every practice, and talked to every coach he could find to learn from. As he started coaching, he formed a bond with Hall of Famer Lou Struckman that would last for many years. It was the perfect good cop, bad cop team. But beyond the X's and O's, dad loved his players, and his players loved Doc. Dad's relationship with his players went beyond the rink. He was genuinely concerned with their lives and their futures outside of hockey. The wins, losses, and championships are not a measure of what dad meant to hockey, but rather, as I look around the room, the positive impact he had on so many lives. For that, he would be proud. Fortunately for junior hockey, dad got others involved in team ownership of the Blazers, most notably Hall of Famer Jim Jost. As everyone remembers, the Blazer home games ended late, or I should say early Saturday morning, and after all the hard battles, Butch Grassi, Jim, Lou, and Dad would have to go to JoJo's and eat. I mean, discuss game strategy. 
Dad would order a healthy meal, poached egg, whole wheat toast, dry, coffee, sweet and low, and a hot fudge brownie delight. <laughs> As many of you may or may not know, my dad was a trendsetter in many areas. He fabricated custom mouth guards at no cost to any player in the league that wanted one. He was the first to distribute performance enhancing substances such as double mint gum, vitamin C tablets, and Luden cough drops to anyone, friend or foe, even referees who wanted some. So you thought I was gonna get in trouble there, didn't you? <laughs> he also played street hockey in Papillo's backyard in slip on deck shoes, knee high support socks, shorts with his boxers hanging out. And last but not least, the haircut that so many of his players proudly wear today. <laughs> as, Scott Bra, as Scott Bra put it, if you look Italian, there's a 50% chance you were a Blazer. If you were bald, there's a 60% chance you played for the Blazers. If you look Italian and are bald, we are 98% sure you played for the Blazers. My dad would be so proud of the legacy that all the people involved in youth and junior hockey have built. I wish he could have been able to see his junior level team win not one, but five national championships. The numerous club, division one, and professional players that have come through the St. Louis junior and youth hockey programs are a testament to everyone's dedication to hockey. Again, on behalf of my father, I would like to thank the Hall of Fame committee for this honor. And remember, forwards are a dime a dozen. Give me four good defensemen and a goalie, and I'll win you a championship. Thank you. Well done. Well done.